How's it going, everyone? My name is Jake, and I am here with the final episode of my second series in these mix walkthrough videos. Today, we will be finishing up the mix, putting on the final touches, the final polish, and making sure everything's where it needs to be. And then, like always, just taking a listen to see what our mixing process did and how it helped the complete the complete listening experience. So before I get into this video, I want to know from any viewer what would make these videos better? What would make this information more understandable and easier to apply to your mixes? Also, let me know if you like my content. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I would greatly appreciate it. And I got a bunch of ideas that any feedback you can give me will help me better create this content to be more informative for you. So anyways, let's get on to this video. Let's finish up this mix here. So in the last video, what we did was we added in the guitar, the trumpet, and the saxophone and kind of brought them into its own, their own dynamic range, you know, helped them like essentially recreated their frequency spectrum through EQ. Uh, and in this episode, what we want to do is we want to be making everything sound like it's in a room, giving it every, you know, giving everything its sonic space and thickening everything up, saturating it. So what we're going to start by doing is something that I was going to do last episode, but ended up running out of time was I want to add a delay here to this guitar because as I play it, you'll see it's kind of thin. Even if I bring it up in level, it's still missing a bit of thickness. So what I'm going to do is bring up our a new track here, a stereo aux input. I'm going to call this guitar delay. Well, and then what we want to do is we want to go to our buses, find a free bus, bus seven and eight, bring it up to zero. And what I do there is I click option click and it automatically goes to zero. I know I've done that quite a few and just in case you were wondering. Anyways, I uh, want to go to our input on our guitar delay and go bus seven, eight. Making sure we don't add too much volume. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo them and add our delay here. Delay, go to our repeater. Just any delay. And so what we wanna do is we wanna find our tempo and our correct delay in milliseconds here. And you can see our tempo is 108. So what we wanna do is pull up our calculator and do the equation is 60,000 divided by 108 for your tempo. So this is gonna be 555 or any multiple of that. Obviously, I don't think I want 555 milliseconds as our delay. As you can hear, that's, that's a bit much. <laughs> and I'm also gonna to go to memory guy because I know this is a pretty standard guitar delay to start. I'm going to bring it down to a tenth of that, which is 55.5 milliseconds. Add a little bit of analog feedback. And what I'm hearing is a lot of kind of slap back with the pick sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a low pass filter and try to cut some of that out. kind of make it more subtle by lowering the mix percent. If you listen to the high end, there's kind of, you hear in the delay of the pick hitting 
the guitar of the strings and that's something that I kind of want to try and get rid of as much as I can. Right there, as you can hear, is it really definitely adds a lot of thickness to the guitar. Without. I really like that. So that's what that's going to sound. I think that sounds good. I think that's adding a lot of character to the mix here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is I want to kind of jump into some panning here. I want to start giving everything its space, which should be pretty simple. So the first thing that I want to do is I know I'm going to be changing the overheads here. So let's let's just solo the drums here. Doesn't seem like I have too much. can kind of hear I want to bring up the er, these these up a little bit first start giving them a little bit of space And I know this is always hard to hear, especially if you're just listening on normal computer speakers. But just by doing this, you know, it gives you a general idea. Usually panning doesn't change all that much between mixes, usually because it's, you always just have the same left and right stereo field. So hopefully you can just get an idea of where generally you want to be placing your elements in the mix. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, kind of narrow the field of the drums. I'm going to definitely narrow the field of the snare reverb. Awesome. We're going to add in the bass. Bass is almost always pan centered just because bass is naturally more omnidirectional than other instruments. What we're going to do here is I'm going to change up the panning of parallel compression and add in the guitar. What this will do is essentially give our whole rhythm section a more specific space and make it not as upfront. I do want to make it a little bit wider though than the overheads because if you think about it we are adding extra elements that theoretically would be in front of the drum set. just bring this back a little bit just so that this is leaving a little bit of room here for the trumpet and saxophone. And with this specific piece, um, usually I would, 
pan the guitar because the guitar is more of a lead instrument, but in this piece, it really is part of the rhythm section. And so for that reason, I'm not gonna pan it to either one side. I'm gonna mostly leave it so that it's filling up a portion of the center just as if, just like the other rhythm section. Um, the rhythm section is very centered in general, but filling up more or less of the left and right spectrum, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. Anyways, so that's what we're trying to do with the guitar delay. We're trying not to make it so up front by making, you know, the left, right go to our hundred, but take up, you know, a good even space in the rhythm section. So let's move on to the trumpet and saxophone here. And this is where we're going to be panning to either side to kind of space out the trumpet and saxophone, give them their own space. And so what's interesting about this is I do want a portion of the saxophone to be heading to your left speaker and a portion of the trumpet to be heading to the right. So I do not want to be making it 100 and 100. So that's why we're going to dial it back. even a little bit more. I'm gonna choose a different part here so we have more to listen to. And we're gonna keep this at 100 because we do want the trumpet and saxophone up as front as possible. Now, like always, we kind of just want to pay attention to the master fader and see how even it is because that's, we don't want any, you know, too much weight on either one side. I'm liking that, it sounds good to me. So let's move on to our next step here, which will be kind of adding a nice reverb to the whole to the whole piece and making it sound even more like it's coming all from one room. So to do this, we will add a stereo aux input. I'm gonna label it blue, that's how I see it. And call it room reverb. Now for this, what we want to do, choose a bus that hasn't been used and add every element to this bus, which is nine and 10. Once again, option click to get to zero dB. I'm not gonna add it to the snare reverb or the, or the compression inputs, just the elements. So now every, th every element should be heading to this track. Awesome. Let's pull up our reverb unit here. Let's see what we got. So we have a lot to choose from. I'm gonna bring it over here so we can see. And just as the delay, if you remember, it was 555 milliseconds. So that's probably gonna be the first place that we wanna start. 60,000 divided by the tempo. I like the, uh, the sound of warm. Warm sounds good to me. So I'm going to bring this up to 555 milliseconds. 
And to get smaller increments within Pro Tools, uh, you click the command key as you move up and down and it, it does smaller increments. I'm liking that. It's really helping that bass come out, and I'm, I'm really liking the sound of that bass right now. Awesome. I might do actually a little bit of EQ here on this to see if there's anything that we... So you can tell like, right off the bat when I bypass the reverb unit here and then add it. It adds a lot of tonal qualities to the saxophone and trumpet and the guitar. So what I want to do here is I actually is take out, go to the reverb send where, so the saxophone is sending zero uh, about unity. So it's sending a good amount of this track to your room reverb. So what I want to do is I want to bring this down to kind of take away some of that, that reverb coloration that's there and essentially make it seem as though the trumpet and saxophone are closer to your listening position. And I can do that through lowering the send. So I'm going to lower this one, both of them to around 6 dB. I'm also going to do that with guitar. A little bit less. With that reverb. With reverb. I think last thing I'm going to just take a little bit away from the snare here. I'm going to solo the drums because there already is a reverb on the snare. So I'm going to solo the drums here and the reverb. Try to find that perfect balance of reverb for the snare. Here's the other snare reverb. I think what I'm going to finally do to finally finish up this mix is kind of just look at all of the levels and see where they are. So let's take a listen to each element here, see where the kick is. I can already tell the kick's a little low. I'm liking where the snare is. 
That's sounding pretty good. Moving over to the bass. I'm really liking the sound of that bass. This could use a little bit more volume. Move both up the trumpet and the saxophone. And so there you have it, folks. Uh, that's kind of our mix here. Um, so usually I would want to, you know, go back and really maybe make some edits and do some automation. And as I know, there is at the beginning of the song, there's like a trumpet solo, which I wouldn't want panned to the side for. So I'd go in and add some panning automation so that when the whole group comes in, it goes to its specific spot that I set here. Um, however, that would be a whole nother video. Anyways, let, we've got through this mix. We kind of went through how we go about mixing jazz and you know how it's different from the genre, like a different genre, how it's the same concepts, but just a different application. Um, I actually am pretty happy with how this mix came out. So I would definitely like to go and listen to the comparison between the unmixed version and the mixed version. So let's check it out. 